Okay. There's so much going on in this episode. I'm loving it. We're going to talk a little bit about my story. This is actually something I don't share very often at all. I always talk about my dad. I always talk about losing his money, which was $103,816. But I very rarely talk about the other people's money that I lost. So the last thing you shared with us Mm -hmm. is it's your 21st birthday. Hooray. Hooray. Worst day of your life so far? Close. Very, very close. You were just a a stock god. Yeah. So you were self-proclaimed. On fire. Made all this money, and you lost it all. You are not about to gloss over that story No, yeah, I can't. You have to tell me. Yeah. How did you lose it all, and what the heck did these people say? Yeah, let's talk about that. That's a whole new pressure. It, it was. Someone else's money. Exactly. So I wasn't in debt yet. Uh, credit card wise, I was in debt to people now. Mm-hmm. People that I know, people that trust me, people that I'm either in a relationship with or we're in some kind of relationship. And you had done this illegally. Splash of illegal. Just, just a splash. Yeah. Not a whole heap ton. But when it happened, uh, again, I, at this point, I'm still a witness, but there are starting to be some transitional phases in my mind going on because I'm, I'm getting stressed out, uh-huh. right? I'm the whole, there's no atheists in foxholes. Like I'm praying to everything, anything. <laughs> I'm reading other books. Like I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. Um, I just graduated college, 21st birthday. I have a birthday party, which was my very first one. Um, oh, in, no. And the witnesses, you don't celebrate birthday parties. Oh, my god! So this is my very first one where people actually came over to my house and my mom knew it and, like, everyone's there. But I was just drinking the pain away oh, no. because I, re- I had just lost hundreds of thousands of dollars that day on silver. So I, ho- I hold the unofficial Guinness World Book of Records for buying silver at its highest price ever. Oh. And I didn't buy shares, which I would still have. They would just be down 70%. I bought options, which expired worthlessly. They just went to zero. So I lost everything. So yeah, 21st birthday sucked. And I just drank a lot, mm. a lot that night uh, and the next following days and weeks. And I just kind of oh, no. became a little bit of a trajectory of downwardness in my life for a little bit. Um, Were you an alcoholic? Or just no, I wasn't uh, alcoholic. Heavy uh, drinker. I was just a heavy drinker. Uh, the reason I know I'm not an alcoholic is because I don't like alcohol. Yeah. Right. Alcoholics generally like it. Oh. Uh, they like the, either the feeling or they like the they like the day after. I, I don't like you any of it. You were just masking your pain. Just masking my pain. We all run to something. Yeah, we all run to something, some type of vice. Mm. And so mine was alcohol because as a witness, that's the only thing you can do. You also can't do drugs. You can't smoke cigarettes. But you're allowed to drink. But you can drink. Yeah. yeah. Jesus turned water into wine, baby. Oh, right. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we're drinking, I'm drinking booze and I'm at rock bottom. So when I called my dad and I told him I went to Daytona beach and I went to a Bubba Gump, sh- uh, Bubba Gump shrimp, uh, in da- Daytona beach. And then right next door, they had like some type of beer special. Anyway, so I bought two pitchers of beer and drank all of them and called him on the phone and was just crying like a, like an infant child and just said, Hey pops, I lost all the money. I'm sorry. And he's like, Hey, I've been broke before. No way. I'll be broke again. That's so nice. Because I didn't pay for you to go to college, so I'll count that as your college tuition money. What? Yeah. He was like, I would love if you can get that back before I die because he had cancer. Oh, no pressure. No pressure. And oh I knew he had gosh. cancer. So the clock is ticking. Oh, I got shells. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my god. Clock is ticking. I know this. The whole family knows this. And then... Um, My wife's, my current wife's uh, mom and aunt, right? I'm also trading their money. And I lost a lot of their money as well. Didn't lose all of it, but I lost a lot of it. Current at the time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I am working a normal job. um, And I still have my money in my 401k. So long story short, over the next two years, I do everything I possibly can to find money in order to trade and learn how to trade and understand more about the markets and, and get money to get it back. So I'm working overtime like as much as I possibly can. I'm getting any job I can at serving to work at night on weekends. Um, I am maxing out credit cards. I took out all the money of my 401k, just started paying people back. Because remember, good old Kevin, right? I stole Kevin some money. I lost his money as well. So I'm just losing everyone's money. Man. And now I start going into credit card debt. Yeah. Right. Just party time. Sure. (laughs) You know, just just trying to really get Mm -hmm. it. And I'm I'm blowing account after account. I'm getting cash advances. 
I did a payday loan. Oh. And then no. when I lost the payday loan <gasps> money, okay, I have no money to my name. So you're losing it all in stocks. Right. Yeah. I'm just I'm just hemorrhaging money left and right. Like no. I'll put money into an account and then two weeks later it's gone. I know that. Yeah. So yeah, just just boom, 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 boom. Loss, loss, loss. Failure. You're not good enough. You're terrible. And it's yeah. all subconscious. I actually know how to trade. Believe it or not. Yeah. But, but you're it, on a streak. Now what I'm on a streak. What's happening? And in order to get it back, right, I have to get it back quickly because again, I have this tick, 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 this clock going down. So I know I have a certain amount of time. I have to get this money back, and the only way I can do it is really quick, massive, aggressive risk, huge risks, and just push all in. No. And just keep doing it's it over the and over. Betting man inside you. Betting man. Yep. Yeah, I didn't even realize it, but it was just happening. And then. I'm not going to go into it right now, but all the, the subconscious fears of like not pleasing my dad and not being good enough. You know, not... honestly, you need to go into it. I can? Sure. I want you to. Okay. Well, because the reason I was saying that is because it's more trading related to an extent. It's very trading psychology in the sense of when you have an amount of money that you're trying to get and then your attachment to that person that you're attached to, you're trying to please that person. Mm. If that connection is too strong, any type of money that you make or lose, if it's attached to that person, will sabotage you. Ooh. Yeah. So we're talking deep stuff. And I didn't realize any of this. This was all happening subconsciously. I've realized it later as I've gone back through and just kind of studied my own behavior. Is this like an official thing or just your study of your own behavior? Well, it's very official. Yeah. But this was the study of my own behavior. But Mm. it's it's official as it can be, right? Because it's mostly trading psychology. But in the extent of if I would lose money, I would be terrified of getting out of that losing trade because if I lost the money, the losses became real. And if the losses became real, then I wasn't good enough. And if I wasn't good enough, my dad didn't love me. It's not just on paper. It's not just on paper. It became a linkage, a real right? real loss. Yeah, Ooh. it became a real loss. I would just refuse to get out of a trade. Oh, my gosh. I would refuse to accept the loss. I would hold it and hold it and hold it and then poof, now it's at zero. And I would do that over and over and over. So cash advances and 401ks and credit cards just yes. over and over and You're over. You're so brave to have kept trying, though. Kept trying. Just Why did you keep trying? Because I had to. There was no other choice. I have to. Why didn't to. you go put it on black? <laughs> because I've never, I had never failed anything in life, but I was, I was at failure. Right, because when you have something that's all encompassing and you're good at it and you're winning and you're doing okay and life is good and then you just fail and lose and fail and lose and you just can't do anything right and you Mm. can't figure out why, it becomes a mystery where you either give up and stop or you keep trying. And for me, I'm now riding on my legacy of my family. Mm. That was my why, that's still currently my why is in order to become a better person, I want to do it for the legacy of my family. I want people to know that we were here, that we existed, that we did great things for the world, and it was all on my shoulders, mentally. Hmm. So I said, I have to make this work. This is your why. This is my why. There's no other way. Like, I need my family to escape adjunct poverty, right? Wow. And pull them from the depths, and I'm going to do it myself. What was the time frame? Did you have a X amount of years your dad had to live? We had about five years. So, and you knew that. Yep. And you had about five years. We had about five God, years. God, so much pressure. So much this pressure. This is real pressure. Yeah, this is real pressure. Ah, I can't imagine. So to make it all better, I went and borrowed some money from the Korean mafia. What? <laughs> yep. $12,500 paper bag money in a paper bag. No. Yeah. I love this story. Yeah. So, and the uh, the money came at 30% interest a month. The Korean Mafia. The Korean Mafia, yeah. So the guy that gave it to me, I forget his name, but he had a cool mohawk, drove a really nice Honda Accord, and had an Uzi when all, he was giving me the money. All he was, appropriate. And he was like, hey, you know what to do with this, right? You know I need it back. And it's 30% interest every month. I was like, yep, sure. And that was the only money I can get. Wait, how much did you borrow again? 12500 bucks. Wow. It's a $12,000 number. So now when I had that money, there was an extra weight and an extra, hey, you really can't mess it up this time. God. Because now it's like potentially my life. Yeah. So what was interesting about it, it was actually good that there was some type of now pressure because aside from that, it was just me losing and me sucking and not winning. Hmm. But now it was like, if you do lose, now there's ultimate pain. Like as in you die, which was good. Because it helped me go, all right, I need to take these next trades more seriously. Like you weren't before. I wasn't. 
Really? I was just taking the trades, but I wasn't getting out of them, right? I wasn't locking in profits. I wasn't exiting early and taking my losses. I wasn't doing what you're supposed to as a trader. I was getting in, and if I didn't hit 300% return, I didn't get out. Oh. 300%. I mean, like, okay. insane numbers, right? Right, insane. but you had been spoiled. I've been spoiled. I knew it could happen. I knew the ROI was there, so I was just always after that. Mm. I was on that high, always That's chasing it. When people learn to brag about something and they get a lot of attention, a lot of times they... It becomes permanently imprinted. Get stuck on that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So do. I had to relearn and reteach, and so I bought a program and went back to the Dow Jones, the beginning of the Dow Jones. So we're talking late 1800s. And went day by day, every single day for seven months, seven hours a day. I would sit there and just day by day and just practice and look at the charts and look at the candles and look at the movement and figure out where would I get in? Where would I get out? Why? Where would I get in? Where would I get out? I mean, I traded the Great Depression, World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, the Cold War. I mean, all these amazing wow. times in history. I'm like seeing it. Yeah. So that helped me. That did help That's me. I was amazing. putting in practice. I was getting the drills in. Yeah. And I knew I knew how to trade. I was like, I know I know how to trade. So now I have this ultimate pain over here. Yeah. I finally put down together a trading plan. I finally put down some rules and I started slowly getting it. Wow. And then on the term is slowly, it was frustrating because it was so slow. But I was like, I have to do this slowly. It's the only way it's going to work. Mm. Well, pain is a focuser. Yes. And you touch a hot hot stove, mm -hmm. you're going to not care about the the girl that just broke up with you Correct. over here or the guy that just broke your heart or, you know, slashed your tires. You're only caring about this pain. And yeah. so it's interesting how it made you, it forced you. Forced me. You know, you, you made it really big without having to learn a lot, but then the pain made you. Correct. Be so much better. Interesting. Bingo. And that's what's amazing is a lot of people don't want to experience that pain. The unfortunate part is for someone to grow and become exceptional, you're going to have to go through pain. It will. That's the only way growth occurs. True growth will only occur through pain, even if it's like muscular, like that when you got so ripped, okay, you woke up one morning and you would feel tightness and soreness in your muscles. Like you didn't just naturally get jacked. It doesn't happen that way. It's like pain is the only way we grow. Right. Stabilized too. And that stabilization and that consistency and that repetitiveness over and over and over. So when I turned 22, a lot, a lot of people love asking like how long it take me to learn how to trade and be profitable. I always understood it. I, I got the markets at a very conceptual young age, buy good companies at low prices. Got it. It took me about two and a half, three years to really get it. 23 is when I started understanding, okay, this is going to take some time. I was still working at Nationwide. I was doing amazing at that this job. The whole time. Yeah, the whole time. So 18 to 24, I worked at Nationwide, so six wow. years. I was working at Nationwide. I was getting overtime. I was doing really good at, at work. And I was getting paid. I kept getting increases. And so that was helping me like to pay some, some things off. And then when I was 24, that's when I made the leap. I was like, okay, I need to devote my entire life to this because now I didn't need, need to make it faster. Hmm. Because now that I'm 24, he's got three years left. Hmm. So now I have to crank this dial a little bit. Oh my gosh. And so I moved from Gainesville to Nashville, Tennessee ah. at the age of 24. And uh, my ex-wife, then wife, Haley, came up with me. And that only lasted like another six months after she moved. So that's when I started the transition of leaving the witness religion, mm. both physically and mentally, right? Leaving the religion, um, leaving my wife at the time, and leaving the Korean mafia, they were not happy about that. So I still hadn't fully paid them back. I was only making their monthly installments. I had not paid their whole money back. So, so do you have a hit on you right now? No. <laughs> no I, paid that. Yeah. I paid that off a year after moving to Nashville. But um, I was 24. I'm in Nashville. And I'm working like a sales job at a stock market education company. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So, so it's, it's starting to get in a line. So the things that you've skipped over. Okay. You lost all these people's money. Yep. You're married. Yep. Were all these people kind and fully supportive of you on this journey that you're of going through? So supportive. Uh, were they? I mean, how? what's no. the behind the scenes yeah. of the emotions you had to deal with from the closest people to you? Um, stop doing what you're doing. Devote all of your time and attention to God. Quit. Oh. Give up. You're greedy. 
you're trying to be, become better than you are. Uh, you need to serve God and not serve yourself. You need Ooh. to, right, all the goodness, yeah. all the things like stop doing what you're doing. Pull yourself back. Humble yourself. This is God telling you you shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. his sign, right, that everything you're doing is wrong. you got to stop. And the whole time I'm over thinking, but I'm better than you. Like the person that's telling me this, like, I know I am. I know I'm smarter than you. Is that I, just your pride? Yeah, exactly. And so it's just like, this is just your pride. It's just your ego talking. And so all this is going through my head. Yeah. Like, am I, am I good? Yeah. Am I smart? Am I this fierce? Do I really want it this am bad? Am I evil? Am I an evil person? Like, what happens if I do make all this money? Am I going to become evil? Because I feel like I want to help tons of people. Right. I feel like I want to give most of my money away. I feel like I want to donate it and assist and, and give and grow. I was like, I tip so well. I've always tipped well. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm going to be a good person if I make a bunch of money. But everyone's telling me not to. Right. So, yeah, it was just con it was constant. It was day after day, you know, week after week. And everyone always told me just to stop. Like I'll, the the popular one was you're living a two faced life. Oh, the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome. You're living a two faced. Oh, we're gonna talk about this. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yep. How did you overcome the closest people to you not supporting you verbally? When yeah. on paper they're supposed to. Yeah. You could be wrong, and they're using something bigger than you, God. Yeah. The creator of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> You're going against the creator of the universe, yep. which means you're going to go to hell. Correct. So what happened? We're going to talk about that in the very next episode. Thank you so much for listening in on Broke to Woke. We are so excited about this podcast. If you're interested in doing this for yourself, good news. There's more. And if you want to connect to us, Go to GeForce Mastermind on Instagram or GeForceMastermind.com. You can even hang out with us, go on a trip with us. Our goal is to help you find your purpose, understand the little key differences so that you can be an even more powerful force for good in the world.